As we come to the front of our planter, we've got our John Blue piston pump. This is actually a new pump that we tried out this year that John, John Blue made. Uh, it's, one, it's one single pump. I've got one drive. I'm using a precision motor to drive, hydraulically drive this pump. I've got the adjustability from the planter. Uh, I can variable rate if I want to. We haven't seen the need to. We haven't done that yet, but I can if I want to. I can adjust it on the go, and I can also turn the pump on without actually driving the planter like the ground drive system we had before. Uh, with this pump, I've got one drive that I'm actually putting on two different types of liquids. So I've got one side of the pump is putting on my inferral at five to seven gallons, and I've got the other side of the pump is putting on my two by two. We've got that right now set up uh, 16 gallons has been about the average. We went up to 21 gallons uh, with the same pump. Um, so we've had really good luck with that this year. Um, and I go from my John Blue piston pump and I'll go up into my, the Wilger Red Ball system um, to monitor my inferro and to monitor my two by two. Very critical system. We've tried to get by without it before. Um, and the problems that we saw, you know, install is a pain. All the routing of the hoses can be a real hassle and a pain, but it's something that's got to be on the planter. Um, this year, I actually, I didn't have the check valves, the right check valve in my inferro, and uh, the ball was actually at the very top. Uh, so I kept the same check valve, swapped the balls out, and uh, so they weren't maxed out the top of the tube, and put a little heavier ball so it would float in the middle of the column. Uh, I had already planted probably 100 acres when I did that, and by the time I got to and put the new balls in at the day, the night it rained, um, I noticed that I had row number three, the ball was actually floating a little bit higher than the rest, and I couldn't figure out why that was doing that. So I started chasing all my lines, got to row number three, and found out I did have the wrong orifice in that row. Uh, it was one of these things that just, you know, it was a, not a, a big difference, but it was enough to show up on that, on the Wilger system, and uh, I wouldn't have known it before if I didn't have that. And it was just, you know, when I was installing, got in a hurry or something, when I was swapping them out, put the wrong orifice in. Uh, so the Wilger system, it's a hassle to put on. It's a hassle to route all the lines. But it's one of these things that's got to be on there. Uh, and we've had years before, we've had other rows plug up. Uh, this year, I also had another line that actually got pinched when I unfolded. And it got pinched in the bar. Caught it right away. As soon as I unfolded, it started going. I saw the ball, you know, go up and it lost prime and fell. And I stopped the planter, got out and checked and found where the line was kinked and I was good to go. Uh, it's a cheap, you know, monitor system. There's some new inferro and two by two liquid individual row monitoring systems coming out that we're interested in. But for now, this is a simple, uh, yeah, I've got to turn around and look at it every now and then. My neck might get a little stressed or something doing that, but it's one of those things I can keep going. I can look in my mirror. There's guys using cameras to look at the Wilger system, but Honestly, when you're looking at no-till and cover crop and you're putting on the amount of fertilizer we are, it's critical that it's on every row.